Curtis. Eric. What's up, man? It's um everything. Everything is up. I don't know if I don't know if you've uh, heard, but like what did I hear? Over the past summer, there's been like 500 PlayStation Network games that have come out. Oh yes. You could um, almost stack them to the moon. You could stack them to the moon. Yeah, there are so many of them. I, I was gonna say it would make me want to do a backflip and fall on my face. Well, you know, I mean, I think in the process of stacking digital products to the moon, you would probably uh -huh. end up doing that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Either that, or it, it would makes you really want to hunt them down. Yeah, it boy, it would. Boy, <laughs> this, this is bad. You know, I I just got done, uh, like packaging a few jars of pickles and making tzatziki sauce. Okay. You ever have tzatziki sauce? Uh, yes, I believe. And I knew that we were gonna be recording, and I was like, okay, I'm gonna tell Curtis that it's gonna taste delicious. <laughs> Because dill is a primary <laughs> ingredient <laughs> in both of those things. Anyways, Moon well, Hunters. Well, the thing is, is you can game. cook <laughs> in Moon Hunters. There are oh, you totally a multitude can. of recipes. Yeah, cooking's one of my favorite things to do in this game. It is. Which is really <laughs> kind of uh, interesting, I think. Yeah. Uh, anyways, I, I don't know if you saw at the beginning of this video. I'll probably do it again halfway through. Uh -huh. But. If you remember, if you remember the YouTube sensation Afro Ninja. Yes. Do you remember that dude? Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, this character, I think he's the Sun Cultist. Okay. His, uh, if you press any button on the D-pad, his taunt or whatever is that. Like <laughs> he gives a, a chin up and then he backflips and falls on his face. I did, I did see that. So that's, that was a fun thing that I found today and I was really excited about. Nice. So what, uh, Eric, what is Moon Hunters for people okay. who don't know? First, first of all, Moon Hunters is an indie game from Kit Fox Studios up in uh, the Great White North of Canada. They, yeah, it's a game where it's, it's all about the constellations and uh, wh what do we want to say? Is it a twin stick shooter? Uh, I mean, not really a shooter. There's maybe yeah. elements of a twin stick control scheme where it's kind of your top down view and you can use your right analog stick, I guess, depending on characters that you're using. Some are more melee yeah. focused, some are a bit like the character you're using here is a bit more ranged. Um, We're going to have to talk about the twin stick uh, implementation in this game for real. Okay. Okay. But <laughs> just so don't let me forget about that. Okay. But. Yeah, it's, it's sort of a top-down exploration game where you're trying to get to the... You're going through four days. Mm -hmm. The moon hasn't come up. Everyone in the game worships the moon, and the moon hasn't come up. So you're all scared and trying to figure out what the hell happened. So you go through four days. Hunting you get to for choose the moon. Different... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, essentially, yes. <laughs> you're hunting for the yep. moon, and in the end your tails get transcribed into constellations. Yeah. And so in subsequent playthroughs, you can look through the constellations and see uh, my character right now is Sargon. Mm -hmm. If I were to check my constellation after this run, which I do in another video, it's like Sargon the stag. And then it tells you like, like this story, a fabled story of Star Sargon. Like yeah. Sargon was a compassionate warrior who was searching for the moon. And trying to do Afro Ninja backflips and stuff. And there's right? a, there's a, a sort of like choose your own adventure element to this in like your dialogue options. And sometimes you'll come across things in the world where it's like, oh, do you want to ignore this or do you want to take it? And that's yeah. those are the kinds of things that will shape how that story plays out. Or do you want to fight or pray? Yeah. And yeah, you get attributes actually. Yep. Your character gains attributes uh, sort of dynamically, like in real time. So if you pray, it might be like you are um, faithful. Yeah. And you get plus three faith. Or like this sun drinker came up to my camp right now, and I I freaking hate this guy. He's always <laughs> so angry. Mm -hmm. So I chose to attack <laughs> instead of reason with him, mm -hmm. uh, just because he's so mean. And yeah. it didn't really do anything here. I think it shows up later on. Like, there's a repercussion, but 
anyways, what's interesting to me about Moon Hunters is that, like, I really wasn't too hot on this game, and it gave me some very conflicting feelings. Yeah, I, I think I might feel somewhat the same way. This is uh, something I played. I, you know, you can you uh, do a playthrough. It's like what four or five days. It's like twenty, thirty minutes maybe, and it's yeah, it's about a half. Hour, and it's yeah. and it's intended to be played through multiple times because you're gonna find all the different constellations and and depending on what choices you make or where you go on the world map, might lead to different encounters or the story might change in certain ways. And I think. What's intended is perhaps to go through and eventually you'll find, like, the the optimum path to a true ending. I think that might be the oh, intention. Oh, really? At least I got the sense okay. of that. It, maybe that's not quite it, but it seemed to me like there are definitely pathways you can go down that is not good. That will lead to a bad end for your character. Okay. Uh, I've certainly gotten different ending yeah i haven't really paid attention to how good or bad they are at least oh i don't know maybe maybe i'm just kind of stuck in that mode where games typically have that so uh -huh, maybe i sure. was maybe i was looking for it and projecting it but that's what it seemed to be at least uh okay. this is something that when you introduced this game to me some time ago i think earlier this year i was really hyped about it i was like this is such an interesting concept like constellations themselves i've always found like kind of intriguing um that's mm -hmm. just something I, I just find interesting and so it's like, you sure. know, we don't typically have games like this. Uh, but I think in the act of playing it, it was like, okay, this is, like, it's fine. I don't, it's one of those things where there isn't necessarily anything in particular for me that jumped out as bad or things I didn't necessarily right. like. Um, yeah, that's the weird thing. Maybe there isn't a lot of depth there because it's like a 20 to 30 minute playthrough, if that makes sense. But I, I just, I, think so. I just like found myself finishing it and, and just being like, oh, okay. Oh, all right, sure. Yeah, it's it's especially weird because I've met the people at Kid Fox in person, and they're delightful. Mm -hmm. They're they're awesome people. Uh, even you know talking to them through email, but also having met them, like they're just, they're just cool people yeah. who made the game, and it is such a cool idea. And what I think the best thing this game has is beyond the fact that it has this permanence with the constellations. That's super cool. Yeah. Uh, just the style, the music. Oh my god, the... Eric, the music. Oh my god. Yeah, the god. music is excellent. It's great. It's got, like, subtle chanting in some parts. Yeah. S straight up singing. Uh, and, it and reminds it me, sounds good. uh, if anyone's played this game, they'll, maybe they'll make the connection. Uh, it, there are certain elements of this that remind me of certain tracks from Nier's soundtrack. Okay. Um, I think it might, it might just be kind of just... The general tone and the mood of it there's the chanting isn't necessarily words no, you no, know no. um and in near many of the tracks on near soundtrack isn't is a of a kind of made up language so it's it's kind of this oh, okay. really interesting vocal uh sure like vocalized voice there but it's not necessarily saying things that would make sense to you it just sounds mm -hmm. nice or it sounds interesting and it creates this sure. general mood and so that's Something that immediately I was reminded of, and that is like the highest praise. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. For me. Yeah, I agree. Uh, you know, the music's great. The art style is great, both in game, the, the you know the mm -hmm. eight or sixteen bit retro style. Yeah. That's that's fine. It looks cool. Uh, I think some of the AI is really weak. Um, <laughs> which is, <laughs> I mean, I don't I don't mean to sound harsh, but like at this point, I just stand here. Yeah. And, and flip on my face because well without spoiling too much in my first playthrough i got to the we'll call it the final encounter sure yeah. Uh, and well I, yeah it happens many times yeah and I, and, I, and i fully expected to get just my butt kicked i was like i'm uh -huh. not really prepared for this whatever and it was um I, you know i wouldn't say disappointingly easy because i wasn't necessarily disappointed i was just surprised yeah that it was as easy as it was and the hitch, well, what I've uh, experienced, I don't know if you've experienced the same thing, is hitching in the gameplay. Right, so I have, yeah, like, watching your different videos, and this is something you brought up to me early on, I see it in your videos. I haven't, I never saw it. And you, you've never seen it at all? Like, when playing, no. That's crazy to me. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's way more apparent in these arena-style battles, mm -hmm. I've found, but, like, even in the overworld, I... 
it just skips for a second or two, and I don't know what the deal is. It's really weird. Yeah, is it because I have, uh, you know, some other game installed? Oh, you know on what? My... I'm I'm running it on the Neo, so probably it's. Oh, you <laughs> oh you got a PlayStation Four Neo? Oh, that's that's why. No, but no, that, that, I mean that's <laughs> that's not that's it. Bothered me. Uh, it's billed as a four-player game. Yes. So you can bring some friends over and do that. I played up to two players. I didn't play with any more. Mm -hmm. I might have played three players, you know, before it came out a while ago at an event. But, like, didn't really boost the experience for me too much. No? No, for some reason, this... The, the gameplay is... I don't know, man. I, I feel so, so bad to like, what <laughs> talking do you, negatively uh, about what it. What do you, you think? Know? I guess because um, I feel like you've probably played so much more of this than I have. Uh, these two games aren't necessarily similar, but I, but I think they're. You know, you look at a Moon Hunters or a or we'll say Diablo, right? And I yeah. think you can make the argument. It's like you know, you can play a single player just fine, whatever. Mm -hmm. You're not gonna have trouble, mm -hmm. but you probably want to have that four player co op or at least two players um, sure. simultaneously, just because it like it adds something, and so like. And I think Diablo, for sure, like, you and I have played it together many times, and it's just, it's great. One is great because oh, it's yeah. Diablo, but, like, having that other person there, like, there's something, there's an element there to it. Like, sure. I, I just, What's I just don't know, like, what do you think Moon Hunters is missing from that? Like, if it's not, like, if you're playing it, sing, like, with a buddy, and you're still just not really getting much out of it. Okay. It's, it also struck me, another game that recently came out, Dungeon Punks. Yeah. Have you heard of that? I have heard of it. Okay, Dungeon Punks, I think, suffers from a similar issue where it just doesn't feel... It doesn't... It's it's not exciting. It's not engaging to play the game. Yeah. Do, do you think maybe, you know? like, we were talking about just the AI not being that great? So do you think, like, yeah. if it maybe it was harder? And, like, so you would want to have more people there to help you? Maybe. I don't know. Part of me is, like... Uh, here, here, the, the weird part is that it it uh, straddles this line between being like meditative and boring. Hmm. Okay. Okay, and I think it falls on the side of being boring more often than it should. Sure. That just playing this game, I could see it being meditative. You know, you're not constantly attacked by enemies like you are in a game like Diablo. Yeah. It's not a huge. Like, a million things aren't flashing on the screen. The heads-up display is very bare. Uh, so so you're not getting visually assaulted while you're playing this game. Maybe maybe that's what's m I mean, missing for I me. mean, I personally, like, I, I know that on... As I started to doing, doing, like, a couple more playthroughs after my first, I found myself yeah. just kind of running through the areas and avoiding enemies. Because, like... Like we said, like I love the soundtrack. I I really like the way the game looks. Mm -hmm. I just kind of wanted to get to the next point, and like I didn't really yeah. care about fighting enemies. It was like, yeah, sure, like I guess, but if I don't really need to train and build up my character to be able to face off against this final encounter, because I'm gonna right. be able to do it without too much trouble, anyways. Then what's the point? Then fine. Um, and I just like cooking because I wanted to fill in all the recipes I could. <laughs> Me too. So maybe that's it. Like the opals that that fall from these cacti yeah. and stuff. That like one opal falls from an enemy. Yeah, is a really small reward. Yeah. You know. Yeah. I, like I don't feel rewarded when I kill an enemy. Um, and again, it goes back to this thing. Like I'm not being assaulted with an X bar and a skill tree sure. and all this stuff. And theoretically, I love that. I'm like, oh yeah, that's cool. Games are hyper active. We need to calm down. But when that's not there, I'm kind of like at a loss. So, okay. Um, this is a mild tangent, and I'll try not to go too deep over the edge here. Uh, sure. You can don't forget about the controls. Yeah. So <laughs> yes. Uh, we'll, so you can bring up. You can like find. We'll call them shopkeepers, potentially. Yes. And merchants. merchants and you can use those yep. opals to purchase things and that will increase different stats depending on what you're purchasing or maybe yep. it'll give you something new um and again like we were talking about like there's not really the like it's cool and like you like i you know i like that character progression but you know you're looking at a 20 to 30 minute playthrough and it just doesn't feel satisfying i guess if that makes sense 
Yeah, yeah. And and so what I find interesting in this, uh, you know, you brought up Dungeon Punks that recently came out. I'll bring mm-hmm. up another game that recently came out that I think for many people suffers from a, a similar kind of thing that you were saying where, like, when you simplify it so much and there's not that drive to keep going mm-hmm. um, past what, like, the main game says, you kind of lose it. And No okay. Man's Sky has a similar thing. Ooh, where really? I love it. I think it's great uh-huh. because I'm playing it like, you know, like like you would just a very simple kind of exploration game. I think I've heard mm-hmm. people compare it to like a Proteus or something. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Where, yeah. you know, maybe you're going into that game expecting to continue upgrading things and doing all sorts of... Cre- like, there's, like, being just so many other different features... When really all they're like, once you kind of break through that mold and you see the game mm-hmm. loop start to happen, it's really like, I'm just going to go to a planet and kind of see its wildlife. Yeah. And maybe I'll do some crafting if I want to, but the inventory system is so uh, limiting that that's not really that fun because I've got to sure. constantly be adjusting with my inventory. And so you kind of get to this point where like, there's just not much there. Unless, like me, you like just the element of being able to explore these weird planets and seeing some really creepy-looking creatures. Or, yeah, yeah. you know, seeing the procedural generation at work when it's like, yep, I saw that I saw that tail on, like, some other creatures on mm. the other planet. Um, and That's so I wonder... That's a real bad thing that happens with procedural generation so I, when you can start seeing it. Yeah, and so I wonder, like, I and I and for that, at least in that game, I'm only seeing it on the animals to a, to mm-hmm. a point uh in the caves but but i wonder to bring it back to moon hunters like when you don't have that draw right like with diablo with any rpg with any kind of game that you're building that character and you're um i think part of it is you want to have that character be yours and and you want to like have that and i think the cool i the concept the higher level concept for moon hunters is when you finish you see the constellation you see that story and that story is yours that you build out Mm -hmm. maybe Maybe it's because it's so short, you know, yeah. maybe because a playthrough is only 20 to 30 minutes. You don't really have that time to build that connection. And many of your choices, while they definitely have an effect and maybe it doesn't feel like it matters. Mm-hmm. And so you kind of lose that, I think. And so it becomes a point of just monotony of like, do I really want to keep playing this over and over again? Because at least thus far, you know, I'm not getting a lot out of it. Yeah, I think that might be it. Maybe if there's, maybe if there's a way to share your story easily, mm-hmm. you know, like uh, send a, a link to Twitter so people can read it yeah. and see. I I don't know though. That may, that, that may cross into territory that's even less cool. <laughs> yeah, I just you know, it's just one of those things where like, it's such an interesting concept. Yeah, and, yeah, and for yeah, whatever yeah. reason, yeah. and maybe it's it's something that you could make a few changes and make it work. Maybe it's just mm-hmm. something that I don't I don't know what you could really do uh, to make it what I would want it to. Like what you can you kind of just hear the concept and you picture in your head. Oh yeah, I could totally see that working. That sounds great. And then in practice, it kind of doesn't for whatever yeah. reason. Did you see Castles? That other the the puzzle game that came out that I recently yeah. reviewed. Yeah. Okay. So that game does something cool where you control characters on the top of a castle who, and you push around blocks and you have a constrained amount of space and you can jump over the blocks and push and pull and all this great stuff. And the problem is you're playing a match three game, but your character gets in the way. You have to control mm-hmm. a character that's pushing and pulling the blocks instead of playing like a hand of God sort of deal where like, you don't see what's pushing or swapping the blocks. You just do it. Yeah. And as interesting as that concept, I mean, it's not super interesting, but it is. It's kind of mold breaking in that genre for that to happen. Sure. I think there's a reason why that that ha- either hasn't happened or has happened and never got popular. Okay. After playing that game, it's just like this feels like crap. This yeah. is clunky, and it's not just the developer's fault. It just I I can't do what I want to do in a game like this. Yeah. So I don't know. It, 
let's tie it back to some moon hunters. Are you watching this video? Um, I'm watching one of them. Uh, <laughs> but oh. let's just—I mean—we should bring it up before we forget this right analog stick mechanic that you're talking about. Okay. <sighs> I think this game was developed for computers. Okay. I think that this. I, and I could be completely wrong, 100% wrong for this. Uh, it does not feel naturally good to play this with a controller in my hand. Hmm. I, I don't. I. I can check the controls or the options. I don't like the fact that your abilities are mapped to the face buttons. I think that the game would work better if your abilities were mapped to the uh, shoulder buttons. Okay. 100%. I feel very strongly about this because I played a ranged character uh, in another playthrough. And, like, so here's the thing. Going into this game this morning, I wanted to play it again to confirm the way I felt about it. Yeah. And going into it this morning, I was like, unfortunately, I don't like this game. And then playing it today, I saw some things that I was like, oh, actually, kind of cool. Not bad. Uh, so, but I played the Ritualist first. Yeah. And she is a ranged character. Shoots magic bolts and stuff like that. Very much so a character that you need to kite the enemies. Are you familiar with yes. the term kiting? Yes. Okay. <laughs> so yeah, yeah, you gotta you gotta shoot them and run around them and shoot them and run around them. Typical twin stick deal. I couldn't do it. I couldn't do it with these controls because I would have to take my hand off of the face buttons in order to use the right analog stick. Hmm. And this is. So uh, I had to do that juggling. Yeah, I, I I I see what you mean. It's like a a poor adaptation of like kind of PC mouse like keyboard mouse controls to controller. Yeah. Where, whereas in Diablo three, that all the abilities are on the uh, you know the shoulder buttons, yeah. if I remember correctly. Oh, oh might be one of them. Mm -hmm. But or circle rather but most of your abilities are up on the shoulder so that you can have that other thumb ready to roll or ready, in this right. game's instance, ready to, sh to aim. So, like, I, I really had a... I did have a big issue with that playing this game where it felt clunky. I, I won't play a ranged character again. <laughs> wow, okay. So, actually, my first character, Dumuzi, Dum is that how you say it? He's a yeah the spellblade. Sure, he's more of a melee character. Yeah. Uh, and so I never, I don't know who I ended. I don't remember who I ended up choosing afterwards. Uh, I don't know if I really did a lot of range, but uh, just to kind of offer the the other point is, I at least as a melee character, I never really ran into that. Um, obviously, because I wouldn't right, be, you I wouldn't need to. Yeah. You're pointing towards. Because I'm just I'm just running up and hitting attacking. the attack button. Uh, yeah, for the most yeah. part, so I didn't really need to aim, so I can. That is uh, an unfortunate thing. Um, Animations look great in this game. Yeah. <laughs> the star God, map is a cool lot of looking. things look good. Constellations. Yeah, the are star cool. map does look really cool. Yeah. Um, I don't know, man. Yeah, I feel you. I you know, I bought this uh, the day it came out, and I was like, yeah, you know, because you got a code. I was like, I'll I'll buy it and. And then it's like, well, it's not, uh, it's not online multiplayer, but that's okay. I'm still, I'm, I'm still really pumped about this game anyway. So I want to, I do want to check it out. And I played it for a couple of days and just kind of, I don't know, I fell away from it because I, like I said before, it's, I after finishing a few runs, it's like this is, I don't know, it's so hard. Sometimes I find the hardest games for me to write about or talk about are ones that I don't have a very uh definitive opinion on whether good or bad i feel right, like right. oftentimes for most things in this yeah game. I, I feel like oftentimes we run into this area whether it's games journalism or reviews or whatever where either a game is the best or it's awful or sure, or there's just sure. a controversy about it uh yeah so like oftentimes i find it very difficult to write about or talk about a game that i'm just like i don't know like it's fine and i and i can point i can specifically point out things i like or don't like about it mm -hmm. but i just don't i just don't have a very like solid grasp on like how i feel about it if, if yeah. you know I, I can't like put into words like yeah this is great or this is bad it's just somewhere in the middle 
um, a hydrophobia, if you will. Uh, oh. <laughs> where it just kind of exists, like like Brad puts it best, it exists. Sure. And that sure. maybe sounds more negative than it should. Um, mm -hmm. Because like we like we you know at the beginning of this we point out a number of things that we just we love about it. like the soundtrack specifically. I yeah. can't get over it. I think it's genuinely really great. Um, mm. I just, for whatever reason, I, I think the core, the, the high level concept here that I find so fascinating just doesn't really click with me as much as I was hoping it would. Mm -hmm. Do you think it would work in a different genre? Or do you think it would work better in a different genre? Uh, I don't know if the genre necessarily impacts it. Uh, I think it's more, I wish I could create a character and just have time with that character. I think that okay. would, that would I think that if I had to point point at one thing, that and I and like it that would I think significant uh, significantly change what this game is. Um, oh yeah, unfortunately, oh, like, yeah, at its core. But I yeah. but I think if there was one thing that I think I wish I could have in this would be the ability to create a character and just have that character be mine for hours. Sure. And go sure. on a longer journey because I feel like at that point that would give me time to grow and kind of develop that character into whatever I want it to be, him mm -hmm. or her to be. And then, and I think maybe then there would be more of an impact on, uh, for me, I would feel more of an impact depending on where that story leads. Yeah, because it's almost, uh, I was talking about MMOs with, for, uh, we often bring this topic up mm -hmm. when, when we're all around. Yeah. We're like, some of us played EverQuest back in the day. And the coolest thing about EverQuest was uh, a week later being at the lunch table and swapping tales. Yeah. And being like, yeah, uh, this mage was in the town and he was offering free teleports to like a main city. But then he teleported me into the rival city and I, I died and lost all my stuff and I can't get my body back. Yeah. Or like I, w I went adventuring down the creek and found some high level crocodiles and, you know, I died and couldn't get my body back. <laughs> it, right. it, it always seemed to end like that. But like, those are the tales that you're telling in this game, right? Yeah, like this game seems designed to have that, to have but you I, find stories like that. But I think you're right. I think the half hour playtime is just not okay like it it's not enough to build that that connection i mean it, it feeds into the simplicity of everything oh, or yeah. every mechanic for, every for everything sure. in this game is very simple and it's not i i want to say dumbed down but it, it's a very just a very simple concept and it's not expanded yeah. upon too much it's just there and it's like yeah this is this and and maybe that kind of feeds into these stories that happen when you find a village or you, when you find a person out in the middle of the desert and there's something mm -hmm. interesting going on there, but it's so simple and it doesn't really get fleshed out all that much that it's not as memorable as maybe you would hope it would be. Yeah. Uh, I, I saw a cat in one of the videos. Yeah. Uh, talk to the cat. The cat's like, if you see the witch, tell her my name is blank. I don't know if I found the witch or not. I saw someone that looked like a witch or something. Right. And I, I don't know if I if that ever ended. And I don't know that it ever, that it really should, but mm. it left it up in the air, and I was, I just felt apathetic about the whole meeting, as opposed to uh, getting some sort of closure on that storyline, yeah. quote unquote storyline, where it's like, I don't know, man. When I booted it up this morning, I I went into a town, and there was a shrine, and I I walked walked up to the shrine, and it said. This shrine is dedicated to Gurm, G-U-R-M, mm -hmm. who was a brave warrior who defeated Marduk or whatever, blah, blah, blah. And that was my character that I played a month ago. Yeah. So I, that was the coolest thing in this game. And I think that's what this game is trying for. Uh, it, it's just not <sighs> consistently hitting that note. Yeah. But, but it's so, so difficult because if it... If it ha if it happened more often, it would make it feel less cool. Right. Right. Yes. Yes. So it's like a paradox. Because you the want the fact that that one shrine was there a month after I played the game, mm -hmm. 
I was like, oh, cool, I remember that. I was in Delaware with my friend playing, and that was the character I made with him. Yeah. If that happened more often, if, like, every second NPC you saw was like, oh, did you hear about Germ? Yeah, he was pretty cool. Yeah. <laughs> that that it would cheapen the experience. It's exactly how I've been feeling about a number of things recently, where if only every planet you went to looked as cool as that other one. But then they can't. Yeah, but then they yeah. can't, you know? Like, exactly like Moon Hunters. Like, you can't have it happen every single minute because it cheapens it. But then, because it's so rare, you get to a point where you start feeling like, feeling like man, what, what is there? <laughs> I don't know, And I man. don't know, I don't I, know honestly, what the fix is. Like, I don't know how, like, what, what's a good balance there. I think design is a good balance. Well, yeah. Believe it or not. <laughs> I think... Ugh. Besides for procedural generation, mm -hmm. I think the opposite of procedural generation is the answer. Okay. I think that as storytellers, as game makers, as whatever narrative writers, we have the ability to put in those points and pace them out yeah. correctly so that, you know, it's been 30 minutes. Now is a good time to inject the player with some awe-inspiring scene. Yes. Or, or a twist. You know, or a boss if, fight, or, or something. Or yeah, 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 right, exactly. If Eris died, like whoa, whoa, in hey, disc hey. one, <laughs> <laughs> if it was like procedural when she died, yeah. Instead of I mean, you know, to be fair, I, I don't want to bring that up. <laughs> that that would be kind of cool if it was random, but I get what you mean. Um, <laughs> um I, I I think I think one of the cool. well, I think one of the best examples. Uh, and maybe we should, I don't know, start closing out the video in general. But, like, I think one of the best examples yeah, of a game that was heavily heavily procedurally generated but had those elements of design to kind of keep it glued together, if you will, uh, mm -hmm. is Rogue Legacy. And it's, I, I always go back to that game and think about it a lot. Oh, yeah. Where yeah. just the layout of everything is procedurally generated, but because it's in quadrants, because it's in four sections, and each section mm -hmm. is only so big, and it's always going to lead to this boss fight. There is yeah. there is a nature of, um, like you said, just design wise. Like there is always something there. You you know what it is. Like the pathway to get there is going to be different maybe each time, but there mm -hmm. is always one specific thing that you're going for, and you know where in general those are going to be. And so that leads to the element of randomness that you want from a game like that, while also having something that is assuredly there waiting for you the, the comfortability yeah. with something solid yeah right yeah and i think that that comfortability comes on mini maps with uh little exclamation marks mm -hmm. right or any like, any know, number of get, things you know yeah yeah if you get to the quest point you know something's gonna happen yeah ah uh, well moon hunters as much as i want to be enthralled with the gameplay this Dungeon Punks is a game I feel similarly about mm -hmm. where I'm like, man, really cool idea. Yeah. But I'd probably rather play Golden Axe 2 yeah. on Sega Genesis. It's a game that, <laughs> like, I, I feel it just like in your voice, but it's totally like, I want to get it clearly across for me as well. It's a game I really feel bummed out that I'm not as into it as I want to be. Yeah. Uh, I was yeah. super stoked yeah. about this and it's just... It, for whatever reason, was not really working for me. Well, if you are looking for something a little different, if you'd like to transcribe your story into the stars, Moon Hunters is available on PlayStation Network. Uh, I'm going to pull up a price right $15, now. $15, I, I believe. That. Is it? I is believe it so. Unless it's on sale. Uh, this is about a month old game at this point, so who knows? Um, no, it is uh, $15. Okay. Oh, wow. Their company name on the North American store is french <laughs> sure instead of kit fox games it's je kit fox that's that's funny why not anyways <laughs> um especially if you have a couple people to play it with uh and i would say more casual gamers mm -hmm. if you have people that maybe would not take to the craziness of diablo 3 moon hunters might be a nice change of pace or if you want i don't know i would say moon hunters is like a a fine game to play before you go to sleep, mm -hmm. whereas Heroes of the Storm is not. <laughs> uh, almost <laughs> certainly it is not. 
<laughs> so that's Moon Hunters. Yeah. Some thoughts from me, Eric, and Curtis. Uh, probably review up uh, at some point. Yeah. In writing, if if that's your your jam, if you feel like reading, and you can find that at psnstores.com. Thanks for listening. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, <laughs> it is what it is, right? It like is. there's there's a there's a. I keep looking at heavy rain. It's right, it's right in front of me, <laughs> and I'm <laughs> there's a deluge of games that come out every week, mm -hmm. and no matter, you know, b b doing something different is great. Yeah. It's just not always super engaging. Yeah, and it, maybe it's just not for us. That's a very real possibility. So you know, maybe you'll you'll like it more than we did. Yeah. Well, but I think that's gonna do it for uh -huh. us. Thanks for listening, as always. Uh, yeah. We'll see you next time. Later on. <laughs>